In a, in a quiet time on in the mornings or whatever, I can get I can I can get pretty close to a gig. Mm. Is I it never varies here. It's always above nine hundred, um, really? day, day or night, even during the peak um, peak usage hours. Yeah, Craig, is it is it possible that you have other items on your router that are, you know, other devices in your home that are uh, pulling away? Yeah, I mean, I don't know Speeds. if the memory might be on. Uh, hold on a second. Let me check one more thing. She's, watching, she's watching she's HD Netflix right now. That's what's happening. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, well, that explains everything. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm getting this. Um, no, I don't. At, at the most, she's doing Zoom, but I don't hear her. So I don't think I don't think she's doing Zoom. I'm getting 410. I'm getting 410 right now. on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I'm not. Actually, yeah. Hmm. I'm not complaining. I was just curious. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not affecting it. it in terms easier. of service, I've we've been doing tons of stuff and we haven't had any trouble at all. So I can't complain. It would it would be very interesting to uh, find, and I'll look into it whether whether we can um, just individually run a process that, that looks at our ONT and says the total traffic. Um, the ONT itself isn't smart enough to do anything yeah. to run any processes, I don't think, except what it's hardwired for. But, uh, but it may be possible mm. to, uh, to watch the traffic um, uh, I don't know, it's, it, 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 you know, certainly, certainly uh, Calyx must have such a, a thing. Um, it'd be interesting to, I'll look into that because I am curious um, to, to know uh, how much traffic goes to, uh, you know, a, a little bit like what the town sees over a week to see what, what their traffic on, it, on an ONT is. Yeah, Graham, if you don't find anything, if you run individually, we could ask Tim if there's anything from the new mosaic system they installed mm -hmm. that yes. allows individual, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know that they can do snapshots with, but with mosaic, I think they can do snapshots over time. Yes. That, that, not just that, one moment, but, but multiple moments. So that's another yeah. thing we could look at, but um, yeah, let's, uh, the gang's all here. So let's get started. Yep. Um, so welcome everyone as we go into the second to last month of the interesting year that is 2020. Looking better now. <laughs> ah. um, all right, so first order of business is, uh, let's approve those meeting minutes from October 21st. Jim sent them around earlier today. Graham sent one change, uh, just changing the name of the uh, Department of uh, communications to Department of Telecommunications and Cable. Um, I will make a motion that we accept the minutes as submitted with that one change. Second. Second. All right. Um, all in favor? Let's see your hands. All right. Very nice. Good. Unanimous. All right. Craig voted twice. I just want to report. Yeah. <laughs> Let's <laughs> report <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> It's like those Democrats in Georgia. <laughs> those Democrats. 
but they fired the guy checking on it now. <laughs> All right. Um, hut report. What do we have going on at the hut, Graham? Uh, I flipped the uh, the HVAC units. I did look up the uh, the maintenance uh, on on our units, mm -hmm. and um, and th and there are filters that we can inspect and uh, and look to see if if they need anything. Um, it um, it didn't offer a very uh, specific um, <laughs> without looking at the that the uh, the HVAC unit itself, I, I didn't have the exact um, uh, part number because I couldn't find the quote. <laughs> but, um, and so I kind of thought oh, I'll send a, an email to Steve or to Gail, <laughs> but I never got around to that. So if someone um, who knows the, oh, maybe from the quote has the part number, save me going to the hut to look at the, um, at the actual unit we have, um, but um, I'll look and see if they, they weren't very, in a general terms, they didn't they didn't give the list of how often or what to do, um, which you know was fitted in with my thoughts on split systems that they don't really take very much maintenance. But um, sure. anyway, give me the part number and I'll find out the specific. Uh, yes, uh, Steve, you want to send it to me uh, did, in the did, chat box? Or did, <laughs> do you have a copy of the man the uh, manual? The uh, I guess they're in the hut. Or there is one copy in the hut. I, don't I have one. Then but the other I, one is in the hut. I think we got two. I think the other one is is in the hut. In but the hut. I'll I'll look it up. Um, I'll, I got you. I'll yeah. send it to you. All um, right. Thanks, Steve. And uh, on other on the other score, yeah. I um, uh, as, as Al will tell you, uh, we uh, we probed the security system, um, and um, and I uh, I I was the uh, the what what would you what did uh, the guy who shot Kennedy, I was the stooge or whatever who went in uh, the first time, but Gail went in the second time to uh, see if Simply Safe actually noticed. I, yeah. I was watching you on that video, Graham. You look pretty shady to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that uh, and um, I, I did ask the, um, I, I was curious, I asked the Simply Safe uh, woman who who called the, uh, the, uh, the, the number that we'd given, um, and uh, and the, the hot phone didn't work just out of interest. So so uh, Gail said it to my so my to my cell phone, and uh, I asked her whether she could turn on the camera um, to have a look uh, when when she got an alarm, a security alarm for um, intrusion, and she could not. So that was an interesting thing just to know that um, she didn't have that option of of linking um, the. Uh, the camera access to uh, so. Um, oh, um, hold, uh, Graham, one second. Yeah. That that's actually a setting in the Simply Safe um, kind of preferences is to allow access to them to the camera. Ah. And I turned it on. So ah. and it, it had you already turned it on? It it, it was on. Look, let me um check this check the settings while we're on the call here and see oh, yeah. if you know make sure it's still on because over the last week I've messed with so many of those settings. Um, but yeah, they, that's interesting to me because I, I thought that we gave permission to, to them to, we may have given permission, but it might not be trivially, you know, like she could be just sitting though. The, the simply safe person could be just sitting, you know, taking phone calls at home, you know, um, and, <laughs> She's uh, a and swimming pool. Yeah, exactly. And they have no ready access to it, to the, I mean, this is, this does not necessarily mean there's a person sitting in front of a thousand screens ready to, uh, you know, ready to zap us. So, yeah, so, I, I, yeah, so, so I suspect that even if we give them permission to do that, uh, that that's something that they, um, they'll hand to the FBI, but they won't necessarily be able to look at it easily. Anyhow, she couldn't, uh, whatever our status was. And she didn't tell me it was because her uh, our, it, it, she didn't tell me that she was being denied access by our, our level of permission. So, uh, so I'm just curious because if there was a smoke alarm, um, it would be you know, useful <laughs> to, to know that they could look at that. But anyhow, um, what else? Um, yeah, uh, well, the video verification I just looked at, it is definitely sent a yes, but it says during an alarm. So yeah. it may only be during the alarm, right? That as soon well, as they disable it? She had an alarm when, um, uh, when, um, when I was 
talking to her, I had to tell mm -hmm. her the secret word. Don't forget, guys, it's it's not elephant, it's donkey. Uh, so, um, and uh, and when I said donkey, turned off the alarm. Actually, she turned off the alarm. The, the alarm timed out, but she still had an alarm on her system. The, the thing doesn't scream at you for more than a, a minute or you know, a minute, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Graham, yep. it just occurred to me that this meeting is recorded. So oh. we, we just made our safe word public. <laughs> um, so it, it's okay. It's, a, it's all right. I will, um, I'll, uh, we'll, I'll, we'll <laughs> convene over email black, and switch it. Black me out and yeah, make sure yeah. I read my lips. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I thought I was just going to have to shoot Jim Hemingway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Stop, nothing else on that. Okay. Um, Actually, are you recording this and then you post it? It it posts it posts automatically. Oh, um, I in fact I don't even have any control over it because um, we're using a, a town Zoom account. We're not using my account um, because the the um, uh, you have to pay so much for the recording space with yeah. them. I, 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 I'm, I'm editing some Zoom sessions as we speak right now, and you you could have edited it, but maybe yeah. that's too much trouble. Yeah, it's all right. We'll just we'll just change change the safe word. It's okay. Um, uh, so um, Graham, I hate to ask this of you again, but um, uh, Tim, I talked to Tim today, and he really would like to see an example of the temperature alarm and the real mm -hmm. alarm again, because we missed it last time. Sure. Would you mind? <clears throat> Simply Safe didn't miss it, but it didn't send any emails. Is that what happened? Correct. And what Tim needs is, is, is the exact emails that are coming through for those two types of alarms so that he can put them on record with the, um, yeah. the with a manned email that's gonna be getting them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really sorry I goofed on that with the settings when you were no in problem. there last. Thank you. Uh, I'll do it in the next, uh, I'll, 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 we can coordinate on that. Oh, and yeah. And, and just so you know, you don't even have to coordinate with Tim. You can just do it because he doesn't need to know what's happening. All he needs to do is get those emails. Yeah. So it'll, put be, them better. On. it'll be yes. better if he doesn't know. <laughs> right. It'll be a surprise. So. <laughs> um, thank you again. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. Um, Anything else on the hut? I, I've got a inch. I've got um, the the scene behind you, Craig. Reminds me, your broken pole. Did did they ever come along? Do you know? No, they have, uh, not as of two days ago. Yeah, yeah. nobody's touched it. But yeah, yeah. So I got a I got a ticket number for it. So I know it's in Verizon system. Um, if we see no movement in about three weeks, um, I will bug them again. Yeah. Yeah, that, as long that, as you don't have a big ice storm, it's probably fine. Yeah. Is that a ticket number online that you can you can check? Is it? Is there that sort of system? This is Verizon. <laughs> no, I was, I was surprised. <laughs> I was, I was right. a little bit. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, they're not there yet. No. You're lucky you got a ticket number. It, it is well you know the first the first time i called they were like they were so solicitous on and they're like no don't worry about it we'll get this taken care of we'll get someone to call you back with a status report in 48 hours nothing <laughs> so the second time i got a ticket number which lets me know it's at least being processed but no it lets you know it's a ticket number yes <laughs> it's, it's a step it's it's with these utility companies it's just steps you just right. have to do each step them up. do each step that's right. They just made it up. They just gave you a number. <laughs> was it 48 or so? Was it in there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to maintenance and service report. Um, let's see. What else is going on? So um, that uh, 29 January Hills issue that uh, happened um, I still cannot submit an insurance claim yet because we still do not have an estimate from TriWire. So that's still on hold. Hmm. Um, I uh, worked out a, I can't remember if I mentioned this last time, so I'll just go over it with it again. 
uh, we determined that in the case that there's a tree issue where a repair can't happen unless something, some chainsaw work or tree removal happened, what Crocker is going to do is um, first call Jim and Graham to, just to see if you're available to zip out there with your chainsaws and take care of that. Um, the or next call- On Steve's side of the town. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if Steve Steve, Steve is a, wants to wants to be on the chainsaw call list. To look at it, to look at it. That's yeah. all. Look. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at it. Yeah, Steve. Yeah, you know. and, and, and it might fire up my chainsaw. <laughs> yeah, but don't do it unless you've signed a town waiver. Yeah, don't no. do it unless that's happened. I, I'd rather sue the town. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you wear chaps. <laughs> um but anyway if, if if jim and graham are not available the next call that they'll make will be to the non-emergency fire department number it's not the regular one that most people use it's the it's the one that's still uh, monitored 24 7 so um i talked to walter he's on board with that um uh, I guess they can also make a call out to the highway department for certain emergencies well. So that's the number he gave me to, to, to call for that. And again, this is this will take care of, I would say, almost all issues of tree work mitigation um, that, that uh, are preventing repair. There may be a rare case where there's like a huge tree problem that's gonna require a certified arborist. Um, and in that case, we will need to call out. Um, Tim Otto is getting together a list of local tree companies that to call um, so that they have that in their records, just ready to go if that's ever a problem. Um, I considered seeing if one of these tree companies would, would work on retainer, right? Of kind of like, okay, no matter what, we always have someone available, but I decided the expense isn't worth it because any case where there's a big tree involved, it's it's in almost all cases, it's going to be a national grid problem. You know, it's going to come down, it's going to hit that um, electrical first, and it's going to be up to them to mitigate it. There's, I, I, you know, the chance there's a huge tree that somehow impending one of our repairs that's only affecting our little, you know, three foot space there. It's, it's just going to be so rare. I don't think it's worth a retainer expense. Um, so, Anyway, hopefully Gail, we. Gail, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. The 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 uh, the, the problem that that uh, the Jim and I went and looked at was uh, was an unlikely um, thing, and it was a small thing. You know, I mean, it was just a couple of logs on, on the fiber, um, but it took a chainsaw. But that's very uh, that was a very unusual thing. Like you say, most of the time, you know, there's no way that that Jim or I should be <laughs> cutting a big tree. That's that's uh, that's tying you know that's uh, compromising our cables um it's just you know it's not yeah we just not, we just had the prim a primary that a tree hit the primary came down on my house lines but missed all our wires so it was that that's a good defense up there we, we like those electric <laughs> yeah. protecting ours <laughs> yeah except when they fry ours except uh, except yeah. when they cause a a fiber barbecue we don't like that so much yeah. Yep. Uh, speaking of which, if any of you have been down Montague Road lately, you may have noticed huge coils still left on the poles. Really? Oh, man. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I, I asked him about it today and asked him to check with Triwire, and he said, well, it's, it, it's just the slack that they have to put. And I said, Tim, it's not slack. They're like, you know, like, I don't know. A couple hundred feet, not on the on the horseshoes, just coiled at the poles. So, yeah. I don't know what's going on with that. But um, anyway, so, if you notice that on Montague Road, I'm so, looking into it. So, Gail, they did do the splice job. As far yeah. as I know, I mean, well, I mean that was why was we shut gonna it. Happen, it was going to happen the night of our last meeting. I remember you That's were right. there. That's right. Meeting. Yep, the twenty first. Yeah. So. Did you notice that your service went out or did you? Um, I honestly didn't even test test it that night. I just kind of assumed that it was it was it was all out um, for the night. So 
It um, must have, it must have happened because they accidentally knocked off someone who was right adjacent to the um, a friend. Uh, th that was uh, when the Holtz lost their service. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So they did something. We just yeah, don't know what something. they did and why they left big coils up there. Yeah. Of course, you know, it may be that the splicing is done by a splicer, a splicing crew, that the coils put it on the horseshoe. The, the, the that you're right. Yes. Yeah. That's a different crew. Uh, and so they send the crew back out to do that. Well, you yeah. know. It's since it's not impacting service, they don't bother do it. Yeah, no, no, no just uh, that's an interesting point. Um, the the uh, the people who do the splicing they actually usually have a bucket because they they're quite used to bringing the stuff down. Mm. But it may be that um, it may be that the installers hadn't kind of like put it into anything, and therefore they weren't set up to 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 put it back into you know, the horseshoes, so the, uh, yeah. So, so I, you kind of, you probably touched on one angle of it, but normally if it comes down out of the, the, the splicing crowd can definitely take it down off of the, you know, the, the, the backwards and forwards and then put it back up into it. But it may not have been, um, yeah, it might not have been set up in that way. So. Yeah, we'll see. To me, it looks like a, an awful lot of coil, like more than what you would need for for slack. But uh, anyway, they will they will figure it out, and um, and uh, hopefully the next if they if the Montague Road folks need to be down again, we'll do a much smoother process than what happened last time. Um. All right. Uh, financial report, Steve. Okay. Our uh, current MLP balance, according to my calculations, is 124,331, with another 39,445 um, due in uh, by the end of the month from Crocker for the September uh, fee billing. And I just received an email today from Crocker with the data for the October billing of 39,654. So we're running pretty steady at, uh, you know, approximately 30, 39,500 is probably a good average for our uh, monthly revenue. And, and it's, it's holding steady. You know, there's these few variations from month to month. Um, I am, you know, concerned about the outstanding maintenance charges that we have still not been invoiced for. We know that they're in excess of uh, $10,000 from the spreadsheet we have. And that spreadsheet is old. There's probably been additional charges. Um, you know, the, the amount in the grand scheme of things is not great. And we're just, you know, we're sitting on plenty of money to pay it. But, you know, running a business well, you, you want your... your um, you want to know. Yeah, and you want, you want to keep your accounts current. <laughs> Uh, and I'm starting to work on the FY22 budget. And, uh, you know, clearly we don't need $108,000 in our maintenance budget for next year. But figuring how much we do need, it would be useful to um, know precisely what our current uh, maintenance charges are. So, that's, uh, that's pretty much what I have to report. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so they are, Tim, Tim is still working on trying to get the, the bills. It, it just, um, uh, yeah, really frustrating. Um, I've had a couple of candid conversations with him about that this is the responsibility of Crocker to make sure that your subcontractors are performing and meeting our needs, um, even if it's if it's just billing. Um, so, hi, Ayers. I'm so sorry about that, that I left you hanging out in the waiting room for so long. Oh, you're muted. No problem. There, we can hear you. Okay. Becky, you're um, muted also. Um, <clears throat> okay. to another meeting. Um, 
open it up and stuff. So see you guys. Okay, bye. If there's anything I miss. Bye. Um, yeah, so, so anyway, just a, what's that, Graham? Speaking of Triwire, did, um, did they, um, you got that you got that notice from them about uh, they were in trouble because of not paying uh, state wage rates. Did um, has that caused them any further problem? I mean, have have was there an answer to the question? Does Crocker have to? Um, does a third party have to pay them uh, wage rates? Um, do you want to talk about that? Given uh, is that okay to? Uh, Sure. So, um, yeah, I think this happened after the after our last meeting. Um, so, Triwire was uh, got a fine by the Massachusetts Attorney General for not following um, uh, the acceptable wage rates. Um, I did. So we got a letter because Triwire is one of our, our contractors. It did happen on our project. It wasn't just like a general thing. It was on our project. What they did was they misclassified their inexperienced junior linemen as groundsmen instead of linemen um, because there is no kind of um, uh, step down from a full lineman and someone complained, I don't know if it was an employee or somebody else. And so the attorney general um, said, you, you know, you, 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 you can't do this. You can't, you can't classify the people who are out working on the lines as a groundsman, even if they never leave the ground um, and they're, they're inexperienced linemen. So they had to pay something like $60,000 in back pay to all of the employees that were misclassified and they had to pay a fine to the state of Massachusetts. Ooh. So, um, Dave did- Tri Triwire seems like sort of a flaky organization to be honest. <laughs> 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 Am I right or wrong? I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they, you know, yeah they're, they're, I think their employees are great. They do good quality work out in the field their billing, their communications, and their kind of like office and management is messy. It's, it's not great. Um, That's crazy. And yeah, yeah. And so um, I did check with Dave Popolowski, the uh, general project manager, and did get confirmation that going forward, all workers on the Shootsbury project are paid the correct wages. They're going to be very careful about that. He gave me his assurance of that. And they're going to be sending the wage reports, which now I guess I have to look at according to Donna every month. <laughs> um, I don't know how to read a wage report, but Becky said she would show me how just to check it to make sure that it's, um, it's, it's correct. It, it, I don't know, it doesn't really seem fair to me. It's like, we're not hiring them, it's Crocker. Shouldn't Crocker be? you know, looking at this, but the way that the law is written, um, it really is up to each town and municipality to make sure that your contractors, your subcontractors, your subcontractors, subcontractors, that everybody gets paid or else that it, it leaves room for misdeeds. So, so, um, so that's Gail, this, this is for the, for the maintenance work they're doing now. Right, the fine that they paid was for construct our construction. Right, but the, but the but, ongoing is for the maintenance. Right. Well, getting those reports might be useful because maybe it would be one way of our tracking what they're actually doing out there. Um, just uh, I've I've received a million PDFs of of such things. Um, uh, every contractor um, who has uh, employees working has to sign one sheet, well, the way they always seem to do it, is one sheet per person um, saying the hours they worked and the name of the person and and and, and they sign individual sheets. Um, I never looked or cross, I never, in all those sheets, I never um, cross um, referenced it because it was just to put them in a situation where they've perjured themselves if they're cheating. Um, the, 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 the problem gets um, sorted out by um, all of those people who work in the field who, if they, they know what their wage rates are, and if they're not being paid, 
then um, then that's it's it's a um, it's the employee driven um, uh, thing and um, and you know and and the paper trail is just to put them in a situation where um, you know I'm I what so anyhow there, there's hardly anything you could extract that would be useful from um, a, and just a, getting a stack of, of PDFs of, of uh, it would be hard to cross reference um, anything at all from uh, my experience of those pieces of paper. The, the names of people weren't necessary. I don't know. It was hard to tell. So. Okay. All right. Well, um, in good news, um, my weekly meetings with Tim, the new operations manager are going really well. I feel like um, things are just moving forward that, that things are not following, falling through the cracks. I I'm really impressed with him so far. He's, um, on, on top of um, all of the bazillion details that um, we need to keep our network running well. <clears throat> and, um, and he has good follow through. Um, you know, I'm finding I'm not having to remind him um, as, as often to, to do things. Um, I do now have visibility into all dispatches. So whenever a dispatch is called, I get an email saying, TriWire has been called to do this. So this is gonna help us um, not only in, you know, anticipate uh, some of the billing once we get those details, but also with customer issues. When someone calls me to complain and says, you know, I, when is this happening? I'll, I'll know exactly when. Um, we also have good news on our inventory front. If you remember last time we spoke, we were like dangerously low on all supplies. So we did get a batch of 10 ONTs. So that will hold us over until the end of the year when we'll get another batch of 20. We also got a small batch of various drop lengths to tide us over. Um, and another one is expected sometimes in January. Where did we get those, Gail? Where, where, the, where were they from? Uh, Crocker found a, found a vendor that was able to supply them. Cool. Um, um, in further good news, we actually won't have to use our, our small supply of the drop um, the drops that we do have because um, uh, Crocker got kind of just fed up waiting for TriWire to do what they needed to do. So they hired Certex, our old installer, to take care of some of these lingering installations that have been waiting five or six months oh. to get broadband. So um, all of those, they're just gonna come out, drive out once to save us on um, transportation costs and do a blitz in a day, like three or four of these installations. And then there's one little repair that also has to happen that they're just gonna take care of. So that's gonna happen, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Um, and they, they have these drops in stock. So we're not gonna have to use our small supply for that. That's all good. Yeah. Um, See. I talked about how we, we still don't have the billing and invoice information. Uh, we'll keep working on that. Um, the uh, Tim and I are almost done with a customer survey that we had worked on last time. Um, you all gave me some great suggestions about questions to ask and some questions not to ask. Um, and that was put into a online survey um, I made some edits to it. And so I think um, it'll probably be ready to go out next week and we will have full visibility in all the reports. Um, it's gonna come from broadband at shootsbury.org. So I think it, it just, people may be more transparent if it comes from us instead of a Crocker address. Um, I got a call from a lawyer at the Department of Telecommunications and Cable about the surety bond issue that we've been working on to refresh you all that um, we decide to file a petition. I was the, I, I'm pretty sure it was Graham's idea um, to try to get rid of the, the $7,000 in surety bonds that we have to pay to the utilities every year in case we should go bankrupt and they have to remove all of our equipment and lines from the poles. It doesn't make any sense. We're a municipality, it's, it's, we're not gonna go bankrupt, knock on wood. Um, it's, uh, 
even if we did, the assets have so much value that they never need to be taken off. The utilities would just absorb them and, and use them for their own. So this really doesn't make sense. Um, the way to get it removed in a global way is by working with the Department of Telecommunications and Cable. So um, we got the letter out to them. We got the letter of support from Representative Blay um, and Cover Comerford. It's all good. But the lawyer called me because he said, you're missing a couple things here. I can't really process this. So we, we were so close, Graham, but not quite. Um, what, was, so what did they need? They need an affidavit from me because I'm the submitter saying I am who I say I am and I'm allowed to represent the Shutesbury MLP. So I got that taken care of. Um, Grace Banich does not have her notary public yet. Uh. So she's hoping to get it this week. This might get pushed to next week. I know I could like, you know, run around and find someone in town who's a notary, but I'm just gonna wait for Grace here. Susie Moji's a notary. The, the, the former town clerk, Susie is a, is a notary. I'm sure she'd yeah. do it too. Yeah, yeah. I I want to let her retire in peace if oh, I yeah. can. Oh, so. I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. but, but she's actually still um, mm. an assistant town clerk. So. I don't, I don't, I think maybe post-election that may not be oh. the case. I could be oh. wrong about that, but. Okay. Um, but anyway, I'm going to wait to see if, if, um, Grace gets hers. If it goes on too long, I'll just find another one. It's not a big deal. Just, Oops. you know, slightly more inconvenient. Um, what else? Um, <laughs> so we also needed to submit full copies of all three license agreements. So all like you know, 300 pages of every single license agreement, not just the helpful ex excerpts that we highlighted in our letter. Um, and each of the utilities need to get their own full hard copy certified letter with the entire complaint that's been submitted to the DTC. So, um, <laughs> you know, we, we need to give their license agreements back to them along with our letter um, and, and send it off. So anyway, annoying paperwork. It's fine. Um, Sounds uh, like the healthcare system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, it, we're obviously keeping lawyers employed by this. So. Yeah. Yeah. He was, um, uh, the, the lawyer I talked to, he was, um, he it was, at least he was, he was very helpful and I was just transparent. I'm like, I'm not a lawyer. I've never done this before. You just need to talk me through exactly procedurally what you need here. And so, um, yeah, he was, he was good about that. And, um, yeah, I'll just keep plugging away at that. Um, in other advocacy news, I had a conversation this week with John Lunt, who is the MLP manager in the town of Greenfield. They are deploying their own system right now it's mo it's interesting it's mostly based on fixed wireless not so much fiber mm. to the home yeah. um you know the the deployment costs were just too much and they have multiple providers up there so um it you know they're they're following a different model they have no state money it's all done through a revenue based bond um so anyway, just a, it was interesting to talk to him, but the reason he called me is because he is putting together a small um, or maybe large group of MLP managers throughout the state of Massachusetts in the hopes of creating a um, kind of coalition to try to get, to try to work through procedural and legal issues with utility companies. Um, so it, it's nothing about like, it's not like Wired West. It's not like a, a, like a combination ISP. It's just getting all of us together, making sure that all of our senators and reps are on board so that they can work on our behalf to change legislation so that um, like get the um, um, annual utility fees reduced, like pull rental fees. That's the thing that I, I suggested we go after first um is try to just get those removed or reduced um to save us and all municipal networks money um it may be a long shot the you know i uh can imagine the utilities are gonna fight it tooth and nail um but it sure would help um 
Uh, oh, another interesting thing I found out is throughout the town of Greenfield, they had old fireboxes, fire communications boxes, you know, those little red things, you know, the red like phones that are connected to telephone poles throughout the town. And <clears throat> they already had these fire lines up on a majority of the, of the poles within the, the kind of like the, the, the Greenfield area. They didn't even ask permission to put up their fiber. They just slapped it right on top of the, where their fire lines were. Well, and because yeah. that's now license uh, that that's the uh the the town access or the town system yeah. um right North northampton no um uh, hadley apparently is doing um the same thing uh, uh they've got a contract to run uh fiber um between all their between all of their town buildings which will cover a fair you know a fair <laughs> few miles and uh and then later um, so that'll be a town system, but um, but they'll have extra fiber for doing um, other things, and then the other things will come along. I, I remember back several some years back when we were still trying to figure out what we were doing back in the you know Wired West is working on this. Somebody found probably Jim Draw that there was this provision in the law that went way back that allowed for this municipal connection to uh, the poles. And you know it was by right that the towns could do this, but it had been put in place specifically for those fire alarm systems that a lot of towns had. And when, say, I think it was Wired West, whoever started pushing on this, you know, they got pushed back legally that no, this couldn't be expanded into this new internet usage that that was specifically for this fire usage. So. Uh, I mean, I sort of congratulate Greenfield on just going ahead and doing it and saying, you know, so what are you going to do about it? Uh, but, um, I, and, you know, there may be a difference between you've already got something up there. So you substitute one cable for another is a little different than our going out there and hanging cables where there never were any. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, we, we did look into this and it was a, a no-go for us because there just wasn't space. There wasn't enough space between the electrical and the Verizon line for us to be in there safely and legally, um, because they our poles never left area for a fire line um, initially. So it it just it just wasn't there. Yeah, and and they never would have done the make ready work, would they, if they yeah. uh, if they knew that we were we were gonna um, yeah. not do their normal. Uh, Gail, uh, did, did John Lund mention how well or how successful their adventure in Greenfield is? I mean, I see those those wireless things on the poles all over town, but I was curious to know whether it's actually working pretty well for him or not. I have no idea. Just curious. Yeah. Um, selling, it's a problem because they, have, they already have competitors. There, you know, so, uh, everyone served by it was either you know compact Comcast or Charter, and I think they I, and I think they might have even two like maybe Verizon too is is one of their uh, people who serves the area, so it's not DSL. Yeah, so um, th they had a, a, a I think he said a thirty percent take rate of of what they built out they will not be building out the entire area like they're not going to go to all rural areas of greenfield they're focusing yeah. on highly populated areas um the big win that it's been this past year is being able to provide free or reduced um adequate mm. internet to their low income areas of which there's quite a few in greenfield yeah um mm -hmm. so that's that's one of their big focuses is is at least trying to get basic coverage to the uh, the people that need it in the populated areas. You know um, that that thirty percent take rate. I mean, this is what all of MBI's consultants were telling them. Well, you know, this isn't going to be viable, economically viable out in these towns because you only get 30% take rate. And, you know, we just couldn't get through to these people. No, the take rate's going to be a whole lot higher here because there's no competition here. And they just, you know, they were clueless that there could be places without competition. So, yeah, John was totally jealous of our take rate. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. I 
he said, I can't take credit. It, it kind of sold itself. Yeah. Um, As an update, Roe is at 75%, New, New Salem's at 78, Windsor's at 80, and Washington is at 70. So. Uh, Craig, what's Wendell at? W Wendell's almost, uh, all their drops are almost done now, I believe. Wendell isn't going with Wired West, I think. And so oh, I'm only yeah. getting... Oh, wow. They aren't? Well, they're not, they're not on the website and they're not in the reports I'm getting. All right, well, just... just know. Know. Wendell's Whip City, where, where that Whip City deal, is that not Wired West? Maybe going directly yeah. with Whip City. Huh. Yeah, well, it's very confusing because if you're with Wired West, you're also working with Whip City. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, they, they, um, I, I talked to a friend in Wendell and, and I think he, he thought that most people who wanted it now have their drops in place. So um, that's kind of nice for them. Excellent. About New Salem. They're oh, great, great. They're up in 70 something. What did I just say? I think yeah. And as far, as far as I know, all, all drops are done. I talked to Mary Ellen and Kathy. Sorry, what's that, Craig? New Salem is 78%. Mm -hmm. hmm. right. But their build, their build out is, is complete or just about done, correct? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. And that is enough for them, so to speak. That's enough. That's enough. So they break even or they whatever. Does anyone know that? Probably. Uh, They're on the Wired West package. 78% was good enough for Wired West, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Six, okay. Yeah. Wasn't it like 60% was good enough yeah, for Wired yeah. West? So. They're in the margin. Yeah. Interestingly, the other towns are just charging the Wired West rate from what I can tell, but New Salem is tacking on $10 extra. I haven't talked, I don't, for, for the ML, and that's going to the MLP. So I haven't, I haven't been to a Wired West meeting in a while. I'm getting this from, from uh, meeting minutes that I receive. So I could go to one tonight if people are, have any questions for me to ask them, but otherwise I'll probably just skip it. Yeah, I think, I, th I think it's okay. Is it even appropriate for us to keep showing up as non-members? We're officially, we're officially still members, I think. Yeah, we just, we paid that thousand dollar fee. Uh... Although was or was that for last fiscal? Oh, I thought it was thought last was, fiscal. Yeah, I, they're still sending me minutes every month. All right, we'll just stay on the list then. Keep <laughs> keep us posted. I like I like to know what's going on with them. Yeah, no, but, I'm, I'm curious. Yeah. yeah. My my Wendell friend said he was paying 120 bucks a month for um, for gigabit. So uh, yeah, no, I just went to Wendell's home uh, uh, page. There, it says they're charging 99 for internet and 20 for phones. So he okay. There's 120. Yeah, yeah. And and do they have to? Do, does that include paying back the um the the? Uh, do they have tax increase as well? Are they? That, that I don't know. That's not. Yeah. 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 Anyhow, yeah. Actually, I might. I'm, I'll keep looking for it while we're talking. I might be able to figure that out. I wonder if that ten dollar fee that New Salem is tacking on is to cover the debt. I'm guessing that that's what it is, yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I got, I heard from Jessica Belanger at the school today. She said there's two more families that we didn't know about that do never got a connection that they, because they couldn't afford it. So I'm gonna try to squeeze them in on the CARES Act along with that other home. Mm. Um, and uh, so that, that will need to get done before the end of the year. It will not cost us anything. Um, not even yeah. the, the $300 subsidy we normally pay for these. It'll just, the CARES Act will cover the whole thing. Gail, you mentioned the that other home. That... Yeah, there was a, there was a um, there's one, installation that's already in progress um, for a, a home in town with a that has a high school student that is unconnected um, so that th that'll be taken care of and then from the elementary side I heard of these two more today so we'll try we'll try to get them taken care of before the end of the year so that they can get in on the cares act and and does Crocker deal directly with the invoicing to the cares act um, funding is that who, who 
Who, who we, pays? How? We do. We do actually. So once I get the bill for these installs, I will submit it to Becky for uh, the town, and yep. then we'll get we'll get paid back for it. Yeah. So that we we pay everything. The customer doesn't see anything, and then we get paid back. Yep. Um. Good. Yeah. She's still Becky is still working on potentially getting some uh, subscription fees taken care of through the CARES Act, but um, it's it's in progress. So she said, we, we don't have enough to talk about it tonight. So she'll keep us posted. So the CARES Act and Becky will be covering this um, the monthly subscription fee? No, we'll only be covering the one installation in progress in maybe two more installations. I don't have enough details. I just heard about it today. Oh, I see, I see. And then in addition to that, there may be subscription fees covered retroactively. Oh, okay. But don't put that in the minutes, Jim, because it's, sure. it's, it's just kind of an idea um, that we may or may not be able to take care of. Okay, but I'll put the installation part in. Though. Yeah. Um, as of late October, um, Wendell's distribution line was complete, but they were still doing drops. Uh -huh. huh. All right, um, that is all I have on my list. Uh, does anyone have anything else to discuss? Um, this may be something I should pursue with one of you all, but um, we have divided our lot into three lots. And I remember a long, long time ago hearing that I think the service pole has an extra line, which would be for the lot to the south of us between us and uh, Jean and Harry. And I think somebody said that there was another I don't even know what the right name for it, MST on the pole right across from 151, which could be a pickup. I mean, we haven't even put these lots on the market yet, but and maybe this is in uh, frequently asked questions, but I doubt it. Yeah, um, it, it would be the MSTs, depending on how many ports we have open that can be run to the lots that you're having. So what we would need to do is look at where the you know the lot locations in relation to the open ports on the nearby MSTs, but for you for purposes of the sale, um, I'm not sure how much it matters at this juncture, unless okay. um, because you because they're lots, they're not houses, right? Right. Right. So when somebody buys that lot and then decides to build a house, it's going to be incumbent on them to. Um, uh, pay for their installation whenever mm -hmm. their house gets built two, two years, three years from now. Okay. Um, we have capacity in the network definitely to serve them. Um, it's just a matter of the installation cost may be more or less depending on if there are available ports in that area. But um, I don't, it seems too premature to kind of do that investigation for potential buyers that don't exist yet for potential houses that don't exist yet. Is it um, a good idea for me to uh, advise either the broker or the prospective buyer to say, um, better take care of this before somebody else grabs it? Or is it uh, plenty enough that's more than just those two? Plenty of there. fiber on the pole right by yeah. your driveway. Yeah, oh, so, are? Yeah. So, yeah, there's no rush. To okay. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you know, the network was designed with plenty of excess capacity to, to handle uh, this. And our policy is that we provide this service to anybody in town, <coughs> excuse me, and we'll provide this to future uh, uh, um, building in town. So, uh, yeah, the only thing I would advise- buying a lot in this town can be assured that they will they will be able to get service. Um, there Very may, good. Maybe, uh, you know, there'll be an expense and we won't know what the expense is until, you know, we see the details of where the lot 
and how is it going to be? Yeah. The only thing I would advise your, your buyers is that um, they uh, are of course going to have to pay to run the fiber to their home, just like okay. electricity, you know, they, that should not be a surprise to them. Right. If they are planning on putting in utility conduit, make sure they put in an extra conduit. They can, they can ask us for the specifications. Communication. Yeah. 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 That's, that's really important for, but again, by the time you sell these lots and someone's moved in there and building a home, you're going to be long gone into your Florida or wherever. <laughs> well, actually, see, that's the thing because of lots of things we were going to just um, bail on the house and then uh, wait in the lots. But it turns out that Shrewsbury has suspended the season for uh, perk tests. It can do it any month of the year now. So it's flip-flop. We're going to get the lots on as soon as possible because <laughs> our real estate broker said, if I got a cash offer for you and they wanted to be in 45 days, you couldn't do it. <laughs> I'm afraid mm -hmm. there, she's right. It'd take us longer than that to get out of here. Get... Yeah, All right, Graham, are you? Or sorry, Ayers, are you putting your uh, the the house, the whole house, on the market, or just the lots? For now, just the lots, I and see. then later on when we get stuff cleaned out. But there's these perk tests, and there's some uh, a lot of scrub growth that grew up. So I'm doing a lot of clearing. Uh, so if somebody comes up at the end of our little short driveway uh, between us and, and, and Mark Olczewski and uh, who I guess just had his driveway finished along the northerly border. Um, and uh, it get to the end and here's nothing but scrub pine. So <laughs> it's not too appealing. And it, plus we got to get a tractor in there to do the perk test. Oh yeah, wow. All right, any other Questions, comments, topics? The only other thing I just wanted to quickly mention that um, we've had a number of discussions in this group about cell phone service at home and blah, blah, blah. And here in scenic Cooleyville, we have uh, now been gone to a situation where for whatever reason, we have two bars of service from Verizon that we never had before. I don't know if other people in town have experienced that, but hmm. my cell phone as we speak, I mean, has two bars of service on it and I, do not have any more drop calls or I don't know. I, I don't know whether that's just me and it's unrelated to us in, in a sense, but I just thought I'd mention but it. E e Eric, is that from the from the cell network or is that Wi-Fi calling? No, that's from, no, that's just from, that's from the cell network. Yeah, that's from okay. you can that's, you can turn your Wi-Fi off and you get those bars. Is that yeah. is that what you mean? Yeah, I think so. I assume so. Yeah, yeah. They've I, added I, equipment, they've added equipment on a cell tower. I or, think they've yeah. added equipment on a cell tower or um, Sprint has always worked down here, always worked down here, but it's worked down here for a while. So maybe they've got some deal with Sprint now. I, this is Verizon. Uh, with, uh, I, Eric, I don't know. Eric, yeah. that um, you get your Verizon cell from con the consolidated tower at the corner of 202 and the, and the, you know, and the Pelham Amherst Road. And probably why you're getting two bars is because it's winter time and there's, uh, and, uh, and, and, oh, and, and, and the service is much better in the winter time Maybe because there are no leaves it. on the trees and everything else. That's that's the reason why. Maybe that's it. I mean, I kind of thought they must have done something, but yeah, you could be. That's possible. Th we'll this find time out. of year, I always get service here because once the foliage goes down, goes yeah. down, I can get all the way to the one in New uh, Oh yeah, thought, you're ruining thought my story. <laughs> <laughs> thought the sorry, that's all right, Jim. I thought the uh, limit was three kilometers. That's a lot more than three kilometers. Oh no no not with cell uh, it's it's really depend on sort of how uh, the quality of the line of sight that's all. Oh all right. So it's um cell can well, reach some distance. I I had a story. I think I got connected to the internet in October 2 years ago and uh, the 2 year 1 year ago. Anyway, uh, I got um, transferred to um, T-Mobile in August of last year. And as soon as I did, I had cell service at the house before I got connected to the internet. Well, I think T-Mobile and um, Sprint uh, work off the same tower on 202. I, I'm not certain about that. Really? But wow. 
Yeah. yeah, they have a different tower. They have they're the best service because they have a yeah. little tower. That's right. right. They they have the best service that, no, that, that nobody else is on. And then New Salem has the AT and T Verizon towers over here. But once mm -hmm. the foliage goes down, you get much better service. Winter time, we get good service here. So that that could certainly be it. That would that's the right timing for oh, that. Oh, good. I mean, I get a bar to two bars. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> depending on the angle in the lake, because there's a little gap in the hill. Do we have another meeting date? We do. It'll be December 16th. OK. Well, motion so, to Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to and I hope everybody has a very Happy Thanksgiving, as happy as it can be in our little isolated bubbles. Oh, really? Thank you. Hi, everybody. Right. Good, Good to see y'all. Good, okay. Good night. Good to see you guys. Bye.